evening folks and welcome to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me this evening with Mrs H on a bit of an evening drive out and we've come to Turton and we're in St Anne's Churchyard which is the local church in this area. Now why have we come to this church you may ask to do a hot pot video? Well we've come to have a look at the weather vane that's on the top of that church there. So what's so special about that weather vane? Well, it was replaced in the 80s by the late, great Fred Dibner, no less, which is, everyone out there knows, is the famous steeplejack from Bolton. He got the job to uh, replace it, and it's still up there, Hot Potters. You know, 40 years later almost, he's done a good job. I think he gave about 20 years for it, and uh, his work's still up there. Now, for anybody out there who doesn't know who Fred Dibner is, I'm mainly looking at our American friends who follow me, Fred Dimner was a steeplejack in the town of Bolton and he came to a little bit of local fame by doing a job on Bolton Town Hall at the time in the 70s and they did a little bit of an interview with him on a programme on the BBC called Luke North which was a regional magazine programme for the, for the North West and uh, from that sprouted a documentary about him because the public took to him, they took to his Lancastrian drawl just as you guys take to my Lancastrian drawl and uh, a series followed that documentary and it followed him for a year and they went round to some of the various jobs and this is the location of one of those jobs. Uh, back in that documentary it was just seen as a church in the hills but it's actually located in Chapel Town in Turnton which is just outside of Bolton. So uh, we're going to take a little look at it now, I'm not going to run all the way up there what I will do, I'll put a link in to the original BBC series. I'm not going to splice it in with my film because I don't own the copyright to it and I don't want to get this video pulled. So uh, I suggest people check out that link now and then sort of come back to this video and you'll see where we're coming from. Welcome back, folks. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take a little look around the churchyard and from this churchyard you should recognise some of those uh, locations because it hasn't changed in over 40 years, as these places never do. So first of all, we've got the job up there. Now, that was made out of copper. He managed to get that from uh, from a scrapyard, apparently. I probably charged him a bomb for it as well, Mrs H, knowing Fred. And uh, the gold leaf which he put on it, that was the hardest part, apparently, because gold at the time, the price had shot up, so it was stuck in his garage, apparently, waiting to be painted. Now, obviously, the question always is, how the hell did he get up there? And what he used to do, he used to ladder it, which was put a ladder up, not just rear it up, you'd need a bloody big ladder to get up there, wouldn't you? He actually had the ladders attached to the side of the wall and he would climb all the way up, obviously getting over any corbeling or any gargoyles as he went. So we'll take a little look now where the ladder was and Fred's mark should still be on this uh, church because what they would do, they would actually chisel it out, put a wooden plug in and then... Uh, tie the ladder to that and up you went so we'll see if his plug marks are still there, they should be or did he do such a good job as we can't see let's have a look right then we've managed to find where the uh, plug holes would have been knocked into this masonry this is the first one here and what he would have done, he would have got a chisel and he would have knocked out into that joint and once he got a little hole he would have then got a piece of wood very similar to a piece of kindling, knock that in as deep as he could get it, get another chisel, split that piece of wood and then knock in an ook which he termed as a dog, knock that in as far as it would go and then you'd put your ladder up and you'd lash it to that hook and then you'd climb up and he would chisel another hole in which you can probably just see there, that plug there, do the same that would be your first ladder up, he would then rear his next ladder up to get to it, there's one just above that cobbling about three courses up, do the same and he would just tie his ladders and keep working up. Now one thing that you probably saw in that uh, little clip, he worked right at the top of the ladder, it's a big no-no in building trade now, you know, there's no way you're allowed to do that kind of thing. And that's how he would get up, so top bit to be doing a bit of this business. So he's a very brave man, but yeah he's left his mark on this church here. Now the beauty of doing this for Fred would be that he could always come back to the job and he'd know where his holes was. 
So if he came to do a bit more remedial work on this church, he would have just plugged them out, put his pieces of wood in and been able to shoot up straight away. The downside of that method is, obviously to get to the top he needed to give a quote. So he'd have to do all this work and just think afterwards, vicar or, or a priest or whatever could just turn around and say, no, I'm not happy with your quote. He'd have done all that work for nothing. But yeah, although the man is gone, his mark's still on this church. So I'm now stood in the spot where they actually sent the weather vane up from. You've got Donald below, which was his man on the ground, and one or two other people watching him. You know, obviously they made the numbers up type of thing. And uh, Fred was right up there. He climbed up the ladder, you know, with just a, probably a few tools in his belt. And the idea was to send the weather vane up. And they sent it up on a rope which he'd set up on a pulley and set it up from here. And he got it up at the top and he uh, plonked it on. And it's been there ever since. You know, fair play to him. I mean, as I've said to, to you before in previous videos, I'm a former brickie and for anybody who works in building trade, it's always at the back of your mind that you're probably building something that'll be there when you've long gone. You know, that's your testament, that's your little mark on the world type of thing. And uh, fair play to Freddie. I think he gave it 20 years. 25 years, something like that. He promised Vicar it would last that long. And 40 odd years later, type of thing, it's still there. So, you know, he got double his money, didn't he, that Vicar? He did very well out of it. So, yeah, that's just a, a little film that we've uh, done here. Just revisiting one of Fred's jobs 40 years later. And uh, fair play, it's still doing it. So, I'm a craftsman. I take my hat off to him. So, Mrs. H, I think we'll get back because. Uh, like I said, it's slowly getting dark, isn't it? And I don't fancy hanging round a church in the dark, do you? Not really. So, folks, until the next time, from myself, from Mrs H, it is. Bye-bye for now.